Yes. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hope so. So first of all, welcome everybody to this uh, Unleash Opportunity webinar on uh, women's empowerment from the CSU to the factory floor challenges and opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, well, we have, uh, I would like to welcome you to, to this webinar. We have around 180 participants or registrations today. We, we are still waiting for, for the numbers to, to rise a bit. Um, so we would probably hold on for, for another minute now, is that correct? Or would we, would we get started now? <clears throat> Francis, uh, we, we can get started. Um, yeah. that, that's absolutely fine, yes. Okay, so we have around 60 participants so far. We had 180 registered, so we hope that a couple of more people will be joining uh, throughout. We have quite, uh, quite a nice attendance. Sorry for this slightly strange setup. It's that I'm looking at my big screen and I have my laptop placed under. That's why the camera angle is not uh, ideal. Um, <clears throat> next slide, please, Naomi. So maybe just to, to also introduce myself, uh, my name is Francis Wimmer. I'm Senior Coordinator Stakeholder Engagement at um, Amfori. Um, before I run you through our agenda, I'd like to quickly introduce our speakers here um, that are all um, uh, uh, with us today. So that is Katja Freiwald, um, Regional Head for We Empower Asia from UN Women, as well as uh, Annelise Tim, Manager of Women's Empowerment from uh, BSR. Uh, we have Leon Moll, our uh, board member, um, representing um, Aholz Delhes, um, and then my colleague uh, Guji Loria, Senior Manager, Stakeholder Engagement. Also on this note, um, I would like to just uh, quickly uh, announce that uh, Katja has also been recently uh, approved by our board uh, as one of um, our Stakeholder Advisory Council members, so uh, we will be working very closely with her also in that capacity. So. Uh, also welcome uh, Katja uh, to to our governance uh, of the Amphori organization and uh, yeah we look forward to working with you on that. Um, with regard to the program, uh, so I will give you a brief introduction to to our organization. We have um, quite a few few external stakeholders besides our members joining today, so a couple of NGOs, governmental organizations, uh, international organizations. So we'd like to also uh, take this opportunity to to give you a very brief glimpse of what our organization is about. Some of you might not be too familiar yet. Um, then I will run you through our agenda strategy uh, for the next coming two years. Uh, this will be followed by a presentation by Katya uh, on the business case for gender equality and women's empowerment, um, followed by Annelise, um, kind of zooming into the to the context of uh, COVID and how also the women empowerment uh, principles can serve as a bit of a framework uh, for for uh, tackling uh, this this situation in gender responsive uh, manner. Um, then we will have uh, Leon um, present uh, some of their lessons from signing the women empowerment principles, um, and then finally Katya will go, go on to. Um, uh, tell you about our partnership um, and the, uh, more specifically how to sign the women empowerment principles and how to activate them. Um, and then after that we have um, around 15 minutes for questions and answers. So please, if you if you have any questions, um, just raise them in the questions box on the side. You will see uh, this questions box. You can just type in your question there. Uh, we will monitor the questions throughout and then address them later on in the in the Q and A. Uh, session. And then finally, we have Guji um, basically uh, yeah, wrapping up and uh, telling you about uh, how we're going to move forward from here and uh, what you can expect uh, us uh, to do in the coming months. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please, Naomi. So indeed, let me just very briefly introduce Amfori. So we are the leading nonprofit business association of global commerce that enables organizations to enhance human prosperity, use natural resources responsibly and drive open trade globally. That's what we call trade with purpose. And our vision is really creating a world where all trade delivers social, environmental and economic benefits for everyone. Um, what I think is important in this in this context is to also point out uh, the, key, the key services through which we intend to do that. So we have uh, 
ESCI, which is our social compliance and due diligence scheme or human rights due diligence scheme. We have Amphori BI, which is its environmental counterpart, the, the Business Environmental Performance Initiative. And we have Amphori Advocacy, which is kind of our origin, so really um, uh, advocacy on trade matters, um, GSB plus sustainability in, in trade agreements. So really creating the, the global trade framework uh, that is needed for businesses to operate uh, sustainably. Um, who are our members? Uh, so our members, is, it's, it's a really wide range of, uh, of um, businesses from uh, many different sizes, SMEs to large uh, brands and retailers, uh, uh, many importers. Um, we have around 2,500 uh, members, 2,400, a little bit more, um, which all together uh, represent a combined turnover of 1.5 trillion euros. So, um, and yeah, through their reach, we, we reach around um, 70,000 uh, producers, so factories and, and farms. Next slide, please. That's just a snapshot of our, of our membership, so you get an idea of, um, of where they are, uh, who, who we are working with. Uh, also, maybe important to, to mention in this regard is that we really have members across the globe, so really in 44 different countries. Um, sourcing from more than 100 different countries. Uh, so we also have local offices in, in 15 countries uh, worldwide, um, uh, really supporting them on the ground. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so may maybe now let, let me zoom in a little bit on the Enterprise for Eco, which is our general strategy. Before I go into that in more depth, I would like to give you a little bit of a or refresh your memory on um, on our journey in women's empowerment to date. So uh, where we've we've come from, we have uh, started or we've made this a priority in 2018. So uh, in February 2018, to be more specific, where we basically um, chose women's empowerment as as a key pillar to deliver on Amphori's uh, vision 2030. This was followed by the publication of uh, our renewed Amphori BSCI system manual with an integrated gender lens, um, which we produced with the support of BSR. So it's very nice to, to still have this, this uh, close collaboration uh, with BSR uh, to date. Um, and also there we found two specific resources that basically help you as a, as a company to uh, integrate a gender lens into, into your supply chain uh, management or into your due diligence. Uh, that's the Annex 14 and the Gemma Self-Assessment template uh, of the system manual. In September 2018, we then launched our... Uh, can you go back one slide, please? Sorry. In September 2018, we then launched our Women's Empowerment Program uh, with specific projects in China, India and Bangladesh. Um, so these projects were really supporting producers in uh, adopting more, more gender-sensitive management systems um, and creating an, an enabling work environment for women. In May 2019, so last year, we then signed the U UNICE Gender Declaration on Gender Responsive Standards, which gave another push to really also look at our standards with the gender lens. And then earlier this year, we signed the UN Women Empowerment Principles um, and we launched our gender uh, equality strategy uh, for the coming two years. And I'm happy to also announce on this note that today marks another milestone. So uh, we're very happy to announce that today we have signed a memorandum of understanding with you and women to uh, basically collaborate on uh, uh, gathering momentum for the Women Pound principles and actually implementing them uh, with our members, um, both at headquarter level and in supply chains. We will talk, or Katya will talk about that a little bit later on how this will uh, will go down in practice and, and how you can engage in this. Um, but that's on a, on a happy note to to add this to our uh, journey. Uh, next slide, please. So just with regard to the strategy, so let me just very briefly um, summarize what this strategy focuses on. So it really reconfirms that uh, addressing gender equality is vital to achieving our key objectives, the five key objectives of Amphori's Vision 2030. So, for example, it helps us to develop our organization and expertise. Um, it helps us to produce high-performing people, uh, including women, uh, of course, um, and achieve the SDGs, more specifically uh, gender equality, so SDG 5. 
And the central objective uh, of this strategy is really to develop tools and opportunities to promote gender equality in supply chains and the workplace to advance performance, sustainability, and fairness. And this strategy has also been translated into a gender action plan for Ampori, which can be summarized um, with these three building blocks. So we have uh, the Women Empowerment Program, um, which we want to continue uh, rolling out. We want to deepen it, um, more specifically the projects in India, China, and Bangladesh, but we also want to uh, explore expanding uh, these, these uh, producer uh, specific um, activities to other countries. The UNICE Declaration of General Responsive Standards marks kind of the second building block. So this really focuses on Amphori as an organization, our standards, and to really make sure that everything in this regard is general responsive. So for example, the revision of the Amphori BSCI Code of Conduct and System Manual, which is currently ongoing, um, that we have already engaged very closely with BSR on making that more gender responsive, um, so really strengthening the gender lens that we had already applied in 2018. Um, it's also about um, integrating gender data uh, into the uh, Amphori country due diligence tool, for example, and of course recruiting gender experts into our governance, more specifically our stakeholder advisory council. Uh, so again, Katya is, is one of these dedicated experts that um, we, uh, we are happy to welcome in this advisory council. And the final building block is the UN Women Empowerment Principles. So this is really also what we, we will be focusing on today. Um, it's about kind of how we can engage our members on the webs, how we can uh, mobilize uh, uh, or support you in, in, in getting the commitment from your CEOs uh, in signing these commitments, but then also how to move from commitment to implementation. So really setting up a cohort of companies to provide support for members to implement the women empowerment principles and to collaborate and to exchange with experts and peers so that's the webs activator which we will um, elaborate on uh, more later on next slide please yeah so thank you so much this is pretty much it from my side for now um, before i hand over to katya i would like to do a, a little pulse check um, so you should be seeing um, a question uh, popping up on your screen, which we would like to ask you to answer, just to also get a sense of uh, what audience uh, we have today. So we're gathering responses. Okay, uh, I think we are, uh, so let's see some changes. I think we can close it. <clears throat> you should be seeing, I hope you are. <laughs> Please notify me if you do, if you don't. <laughs> Okay, well, I can I can just tell you the results instead then. Uh, we have 78% uh, businesses, so that's not surprising. That pretty much reflects also the registration that we had beforehand. 13% civil society, NGOs, etc. Um, and then uh, around 3% for all government, intergovernment organizations, research, uh, trade unions. Ah, oh, there it is. Voila. Okay, so there was a bit of a hiccup. Um, now you can see it, this is the breakdown. So this is our audience today. That's um, good to know. Um, moving to the second question, and this is for businesses only. So if you're a business, kindly uh, respond. If you are not, um, please do not, just to also not screw the, uh, the numbers here. So the question is, um, have you signed the UN Women Empowerment Principles uh, already? Uh, I might have an idea already what the answers or the predominant answers would be. Let's 
So 50% has voted. Okay, so let's uh, still some answers coming in, but I think we can close it for the sake of time. I think we get a good idea now. Um, I hope you can see it now. Voila. Uh, I think there's work to do. Uh, we see 10% have signed it, which is great news. So congratulations on that. Um, for the ones that uh, are not aware or, or have not signed it, um, I think this is a great opportunity to also fill this gap and get this high level commitment from uh, from your CEOs to really then also pave the way for for uh, yeah cascading this down uh, through your organization and into your supply chains. Um, final question. Voila. So the last question is how big is the missed economic opportunity because of women not equally participating in the economy? So that gives you a sense of the business opportunity that is um, out there. <clears throat> Okay, for the sake of time, I will also close this uh, once we have 50% of the vote. Okay, so we have more than half responding correctly. Indeed, it's 3.2 billion. So this, I think, gets to show that there is huge potential in, in really um, you know, maximizing the potential that uh, that that um, women bring uh, by providing them with an equal uh, framework, equal opportunity, uh, etc., to really help empower them at the workplace and beyond. So I think that's it from my side for now. I will pass on to Katya. Just also as a side note, this webinar will be recorded, so you can you can also um, you know review it again or share it with your colleagues uh, afterwards. Um, Katya, the floor is yours. I'll pass on to you. So, so please uh, go ahead. Thank you very much, um, Francis, and thank you very much um, for having um, me and on behalf of you and women in this really um, important webinar. Really interesting um, polling from the from the audience. So it's really good to see who is in the room. And um, I think there's some good news. Um, on, on some of the companies already being aware of what the webs are and having signed them. But I think um, there's even better news for um, many of you that have not yet um, signed or uh, engaged in it. Um, I, my background, just very quickly, I have had um, the opportunity to work 15 years in the private sector for a company that really has kind of leveraged the gains out of women's economic empowerment and significantly has seen um, the business um, growing and becoming more um, resilient, but also really enjoying a lot of um, new innovation capacity, etc. So I think there is lots what um, is to be gained from the ones that um, haven't been on that journey. And we hope today um, through that presentation, we will be able to um, share a little bit what the opportunity is and how um, every one of you can be um, engaged um, in this journey. If you would want to move um, on, please, um, to the next slide. Um, so I think many of you, and, and I've been with some of you uh, exactly a year ago in the really exciting um, conference in June um, last year in Brussels um, of Amphori, and we have talked a lot about the business case already there, so I think it's really great to see this journey also of Amphori and its members to coming to something really concrete um, right now. 
And I just want to emphasize on the business case very quickly um, again. So we, we got the number of already 3.2 um, trillion as the business opportunity. And I take this um, on my bet, actually, um, I'm for the moment based in Asia Pacific, and this is only the number for Asia Pacific. If we would look at the global opportunity here, it's um, 12 trillion, which I think is a, is a great and is a very big opportunity. But the reality is, I think as a company, you're very much focused on and looking, what's the opportunity um, for me? And as a company, I think, at least for me, that resonated always the best is looking across your value chain from a workplace, from a marketplace, and then um, looking into the wider community that you are working with. And just from a business case perspective, a couple of um, um, hints here. If you look in a workplace, obviously um, diversity um, ensures better financial returns. There's lots of statistics out there and I'm not going to bore you with numbers, but this is a proven um, case. But also I think one that we see very much popping up now also in that crisis and the pandemic is that employees become more demanding to their employers as well and really want to understand, am I really in a good company? Do, um, does my employer have the right um, means and um, approaches in place? So we really see that um, workplace diversity also increased reputation, particularly um, amongst younger um, employees. And I think it's important as a company to secure your um, pipelines, really to focus on gender diversity and all kinds of diversity in the workplace. So it's not only a gender conversation. In the marketplace, um, innovation rates are much higher. Um, again, lots of um, examples here where we won't have the time today um, to go into depth into that. And one thing I, I guess many of you realize um, in your consumer base is um, women are the fastest growing consumer group in the world and they're really having the biggest spending power. So ignoring them, I think, um, is losing out on business um, opportunity. So that is just kind of to show what is on the table and what are we talking about. Um, now, the good news is I think there's a very good framework and an approach which companies can apply and where we have been really um, thrilled, please next slide, that um, Amphori has been really leading in this and really helped to, to really um, drive this forward from within before actually going into um, um, reaching out to their members to really see on how can we now embrace this gender equality into our wider um, network of members. So I'm just going to briefly share with you in the beginning of um, this year's, we had um, the pleasure to have Christian, um, the Amphori president, with us in Bangkok and um, really taking the leadership and signing the women's empowerment principles without at this time really um, knowing to what depths this is going to lead in the future with signing the MOU today, but really taking up the stand and say, we're going to stand up here and we're going to do something. I think that is what is really needed, um, that leadership um, in organizations to really drive um, women's economic empowerment forward um, in the organization. We are committed now, and I'm just going to reiterate, and my thank you to, to Amphori for that, but we are committed um, to make this a reality, working um, not only with the members in, in Europe, but really very strongly also with the producers on the ground in Asia Pacific and in other regions um, as well. So we have um, joined also our forces within our collaboration right now. with a great um, program which is called We Empower Asia. It's a program which is supported um, and funded by the European Commission. And we've really um, decided with Amphori that we want to do the strategic partnership to really give also the opportunity for the members to be part of this really unique opportunities over the next two years. Um, that's how long the program is still um, running and working with European companies and also with companies in the Asia Pacific. So what exactly um, is the program doing? And I'm not going to go in these three areas, but basically two areas that are probably really important for you is really one is 
working with companies like yours to become more gender inclusive. It's fine, we can keep going. And the second one is um, really looking at working also with entrepreneurs and bringing um, women enterprises, for example, much more in bigger value chains. So I think these are really the both things that um, can make a difference um, and be beneficial for your organizations. So the first one, um, how to become more gender inclusive as a company, and we've mentioned it many times, the women's empowerment principles um, is a really um, strong um, approach to that. If you could please move to the, the next slide. So there are seven of them. And this is where we really um, want to take companies on, on a journey to get to know these seven principles and really how to um, how to implement them in um, your organizations. And it starts with principle number one. And there's a good reason that this principle number one, it is the leadership that is needed. I've been speaking about this a lot already now, but this is where it starts really getting the, the leadership of the companies um, in place um, and really being committed because there might be so much drive in a company, but if the leadership is not behind this, um, it's not gonna work. And that's something where we have um, experienced over the time. The the other two, uh, the other six principles, um, if you move please to the next slide, is very easy to understand if you look at your value chain as a company from workplace, marketplace and community, as I mentioned this before. And so the principles are really structured around this. Um, the second principle, which is really looking about gender equality in the workplace, um, including that um, in the workplace um, area is really obviously ensuring employee health, well-being and safety. And then moving further down the, the value chain in the marketplace, looking at upskilling, for example, um, women employees in your value chains, but also looking at procurement policies, um, how is your supply chain structured, Structured. how is gender equalities at the factory um, floor um, implemented, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then in a, a larger scale, how can you use your sphere of influence to influence the communities that you are working with, contributing to the um, to the equality in the communities, but also as Amphori, for example, is doing right now, is really uh, mobilizing the whole community that they are working with. So this is kind of very simply speaking, um, what the women's empowerment principles um, are. And one thing I just want to highlight, and Annelies is going to talk a little bit more about this. One thing we've really realized in the last couple of months when working with the companies that have signed the women's empowerment principles, this is a a guiding principle which helps really through in in times like COVID is really a good sort of clustering things and an approach that you can apply in any context. If you want to just quickly move um, forward. And that brings me um, to the point, um, I think while we have heard um, having conducted many interviews with different CEOs um, within the region in Asia and Europe, but also in others, um, is really the realization that it is now actually the moment to take a decision um, where you're anyway going to rebuild and relook at many of the strategies in an organization. And I think for all of us, the biggest priority, to be very honest, is probably economic growth and economic recovery, most of all. And from what we have seen and learned and know and all the data that existed before, if we don't build this right now in a more gender inclusive way, um, we're actually going to catapult backwards and really losing out on this big number, which we have heard in the beginning, 12 trillion. This is going to be not unleashed and it's going to be really going backwards if we don't take a stand right now. And I think we will have the opportunity now from hearing from Annelise a little bit more on what particularly the impacts on women are in the crisis like COVID, but also what the opportunities are to actually use women and really building back more inclusive um, and more resilient. Annelise, by this, um, I would love to hand it over to you and share a little bit more of your intelligence around that. Great, thank you very much, Katia. Um, so just to begin with, I just want to say for some reason I can't see the presentation, so I assume that everyone else is, is seeing it. I don't know, my computer is being a little bizarre, but I do have a version on my desktop, so I think it should be fine, but apologies if things don't always um, 
um, match up, but I think I think it'll be okay. So um, yeah, thank you, thank you, Katya, to um, that great introduction. Thank you, Amphoy, as well for for having us today. Um, you know, we're really excited to be working with both organizations um, on this really important topic. Um, so just quick background on, on BSR. So we're a global nonprofit um, working with our network with over 250 multinational businesses um, with a very ambitious uh, agenda to create a more just and sustainable world. Um, in particular, relevant for today's discussion, um, we do a lot of work on women's empowerment. So working with um, businesses to see how they can support and promote women's empowerment throughout their value chain. Um, and we've obviously been following the COVID-19 crisis really closely um, to understand the impacts on women, but also the entry points for business um, to, to address these, these impacts. Um, so we're already seeing um, if we're on the slide about COVID impacting every part of a company's value chain, we can see that um, uh, COVID-19 is, is having um, really widespread impacts. Um, and these are likely to be very major and long lasting. Um, so just in Asian Pacific region alone, we're estimated GDP loss as high as 800 billion um, and really countless jobs being lost. Um, so currently we're seeing massive disruptions of labor and supply chains and women are, are present throughout these to varying degrees. Um, I'm sure many of you are aware of, you know, um, brands having to cancel orders, um, shutting down factories, um, or really quickly having to pivot to, um, to produce medical supplies or, or other supplies, for example. Um, and so the, the impacts of this crisis, but also how companies respond are gonna be felt differently by women because they are present in different areas, but also, um, because of the, the pre-existing discrimination that they face. So there's preliminary data showing that men are at a slightly higher risk to, to the virus itself, um, but women are facing uh, a, a range of other risks related to the, the impacts of the virus um, driven by these existing inequalities. And so this includes, for example, being concentrated in vulnerable sectors. So women are concentrated in, in tourism, for example, which is seeing um, really, really negative impacts, uh, high, sometimes, you know, 90% job losses, um, service sectors, um, also specific supply chain sectors, such as the apparel sector, um, where we are seeing, you know, as I mentioned, factories, um, farms having to shut down. Um, there's also the, the added weight of unpaid care work, so the care that um, families have to do um, unpaid. Do um, right now, this is being just exacerbated due to school closures and daycare center closure, closures. Closures. So, in normal times, women are already undertaking the bulk of this work, um, and we are seeing that those those uh, trends continuing and being exacerbated during this. Um, crisis and it's actually causing women. So there is data now that's showing that it's causing women to have to step back and leave the workplace um, in certain instances. Um, there's also rising trends around uh, domestic violence. So there's a lot of media coverage of this, of, of women who are being, um, you know, now their, their workplace is becoming their home and they're being forced to, to stay with the, the perpetrator um, uh, and, you know, because of lockdown orders can't leave or because of, um, you know, new economic insecurity related to the COVID crisis um, don't have the economic safety net to, to leave the, their home where the perpetrator is located. Um, so just going to the next slide about the gender challenges across supply chains. Um, so we know that supply chains are particularly vulnerable during this time. Um, we're seeing in Bangladesh, for example, where 80% of the economy depends on the garment sector and estimated 3 billion garment orders have already been canceled or postponed due to the crisis. Um, and up to 90% of factories are estimated to be closed. Um, in, in India, um, 5 million jobs are estimated to be at risk um, in the sector, in the um, garment sector alone. Um, and the situation is even more precarious for um, internal migrants and migrant workers who are forced to return home. And some of this, we've heard of stories of, of um, workers walking upwards of 100 kilometers. Um, so here, I just want to quickly go over some of the impacts that we're, we're seeing. Um, so first, the, the crisis is cutting women off um, from accessing sexual and reproductive health resources. So formerly, some of these were provided in the factories or farms where they worked, um, and as they are closed, they no longer have access to this. Um, but we also see that uh, healthcare systems are having to pivot their focus to respond to the COVID crisis. Um, and this is important because it will have long-term impacts. So we saw with the Ebola crisis, for example, um, that years later, uh, rates of maternal mortality, uh, and unwanted pregnancies had actually increased um, directly linked to the lack of 
um, health resources for women during this time. There's also a lot of misinformation being spread about the impacts of the virus, um, and women in general have have less access to information, so there's already gaps in access to um, internet uh, and internet resources, and so this spread of misinformation is really going to impact um, women there. Um, and then in general, women are un underrepresented, sometimes not at all represented, in the decision-making process during this time. So as um, suppliers, brands, governments are trying to react to the, to the challenges posed by COVID, um, women are not at the table, and so their experiences and their voices are not being heard. In terms of health and safety, um, where facilities have stayed open, uh, production is often requires close proximity and PPE, unfortunately, is not designed for women. Um, it normally takes a, a man as its kind of um, as a, its starting point, and so the, the PPE doesn't fit them. Um, it's not uh, tailored to their needs. Um, pregnant women in particular are even more at risk during this time. Um, in normal circumstances, we also see that increased stress on managers uh, within factories actually leads to increased verbal and physical abuse against, against women workers. Um, and obviously, I think we can all understand that stress rates are probably you know, through the roof due to the unprecedented situation and the, the constant changes that, that we're seeing. And we can expect this to have an increase on the, the rates of physical and ver verbal abuse of workers as well. Um, and then finally, um, so women are overrepresented in informal and low-paid jobs, um, and they're going to be the first to be let go um, or um, lose their job during this time. Um, there's also a lot of challenges in receiving wages. Um, one sort of silver lining here is that a lot of factories are very quickly being forced to switch to digital wages, um, and BSR through our HER project has actually seen that digital wages uh, when implemented well, can increase women's uh, access and control over their over their wages. So that is a, a silver lining. So if we just go to the next slide. Um, so what can business do during this time? And so as Katya said, the women's empowerment principles provide a really useful and relevant framework for how companies can support women during this time across their value chain. And there's actually a lot of opportunities and I'm just gonna talk about a few today. Um, so in terms of leadership, um, integrating gender concerns into your leadership commitments, making a very you know, public statement about this, whether it's through your, your strategy, um, or for example, signing the women's empowerment principles, joining the almost 3,000 3, CEOs who've already done that, um, can really create enhanced trust and establish your company as a leader on this issue. And this is enhanced trust with your, you know, with your consumers, but also um, with your suppliers and your employees. Um, in the workplace, uh, paid leave, non-discrimination policies, also support for the specific health and safety hygiene needs of women um, are all measures that businesses can take to support work during to support women during the, the pandemic. Um, and these are really, you know, paid leave in particular. I mentioned the, the unpaid care work burden. So making sure that um, women and men are able to um, balance new care needs that we're seeing as um, schools and daycare centers are closed can really make sure that you're retaining talent. So retaining women and also men who need to be able to do this. Um, and you know, safeguarding some of the progress that has been made on workplace equality. Um, so across the company's marketplace, there's also a number of measures um, that businesses can take, including expanding relationships with women-owned businesses during this time and supporting them to respond to um, the crisis, but also exploring um, industry and regional collaborations. Um, so this is gonna be really important to ensure holistic recovery, but also support resilience of your supply chain. Um, in your communities, um, thinking about providing support focused on women's needs to domestic violence shelters, um, women's rights organizations, and this is going to help them respond both during the crisis, but also as we build back. Um, and then finally, so, you know, gender data is really critical to understand both the current situation, but also make sure that you are building back in a way that supports women. Um, so collecting gender disaggregated data and also reporting on it against um, gender relevant metrics and indicators. Um, is really is really going to be key to making sure that you are making progress in this area and also safeguarding, as I said, progress that has already been made. Um, so just going to the next slide. Um, so for suppliers in particular, you know, there's a number of ways that um, businesses can support their suppliers, and I'm only going to briefly touch on a few here. Um, 
So the first is around making sure that they have the, the information, the capacity to respond to the situation. Um, so sharing information from um, you know, internationally recognized sources, such as the World Health Organization, such as some of the resources that UN Women has put out during this time. Um, also working to, to train them and provide uh, capacity building, whether it's, it's online. So a lot of resources um, are being put out online now that can be shared with suppliers. Um, and then also thinking about working through uh, regional advocacy efforts with governments to ensure women benefit from um, economic recovery packages. Um, audits in particular are going to be key. Um, they're being canceled and delayed, moved to remote auditing as we're seeing, um, but making sure that you are still taking a gender sensitive approach to these, having a gender equal team, um, making sure that you're collecting and disaggregating, uh, collecting and tracking gender disaggregated data, for example, um, are going to be really important here. In terms of um, going forward, um, continuing to do that. So, you know, it's not just enough to be having a gender balanced team during the crisis, but really continuing those commitments going forward. Um, continuing the, the collect gender disaggregated data will make sure that your, your response um, responds to the needs of, of women workers during this time. So then just going to the next slide. Um, so we just wanted to share a tool that um, BSR and UN Women have developed, um, a COVID-19 gender self-assessment tool and action planning um, that companies can use to assess the gender responsiveness of their COVID-19 um, plan. So it's an online tool that's available to, to anyone who would like to, any company that would like to use it or organization. Um, you answer a series of yes, no questions across these different areas that I just talked about. So leadership, workplace, marketplace, community, um, and data. And see, you know, these are aligned to the women's empowerment principles, but they're tailored to the current situation. Um, and it really allows companies to use these results to then build an action plan um, to ensure a gender responsive approach to COVID-19. Um, so this is one tool that's available. There are other tools, um, including, for example, the gender gap um, assessment tool from uh, that's directly aligned to the women's empowerment principle, um, though it is also publicly available online. Um, so I'm going to stop there. That was a lot. I'm going to turn it back over to, to Francis to continue. Thank you so much, Annelise. Really interesting uh, input here. Uh, just also as a side note um, that we will also make these tools available on our website so you will be able to find them uh, there as well in our uh, gender web page which we are also uh, launching after this web you can find all the resources there um, and of course in the in the materials of the slides so um, but let me hand over to Leon um, to hear uh, about some lessons from a, a women empowerment principles signatory Please, Leon, go ahead. Thanks, Frances, uh, and thank you all for the great introductions already until now. Uh, well, the lessons from a web women empowerment uh, signatory, uh, that's not that easy to, to share lessons at the moment in time that you just recently joined or signed the women empowerment principles. And I think it's fair to say that uh as a food retailer we, we are a food trailer retailer we are in 11 countries in europe and us in asia uh operating around six seven thousand uh food supermarkets that we will find a lot of differentiation in our business and we find it inside our business uh, itself because we have 350,000 and a little bit more associates working for us and you can imagine that in the supermarket business, a lot is women and in other places in the distribution center, a lot is men. And that has its reasons. The reason is not, let's take a woman. No, there are simply, and that's a development that happened in time, there is an imbalance in gender in the operations. And that made us decide and our CEO decide to just sign the women empowerment principles as a statement you need to have a firm commitment from the higher management as we hear it already uh, before things are going to happen because it's not going to happen overnight it's a cultural thing uh, but we need that internal signal to move the topic forward in our own operation primarily first in our own operation uh, so that's what we are doing now and i have to say it's not an easy one 
because everybody talks about it, but acting upon it is not really uh, well, not 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 really what people do, because they just simply go back to their old pattern and think, well, but I need to have the best person at the best place. So we need to 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 educate our associates, our own persons first, to just shut off that filter of gender when they do their uh, the, the, the applications, when they fill, fill the vacancies, when they promote persons and so on. And uh, that's not a, a, a thing that is just happening, well, uh, on purpose, it's uh, developed in time. So we see culture of our own company as a major driver also to dive into our supply chains. Uh, we have around, well, 100,000 own brand products globally. And then, of course, we also sell the national brands. So it's, it's a very, very fragmented uh, supply chain and suppliers landscape. And it's kind of difficult to draw one line there because simply we are sourcing all over the world, mainly food, but it's coming from everywhere. So what we like to do at first is just to put our ambitions and aspiration on paper and we haven't done that very concretely we signed the empowerment principles but the next step will clearly be that we also put an ambition external first internal then external uh, what we are working on also to make sure that we can get the commitment from all the country representatives because in eastern europe the 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 way of looking towards gender is different than western europe than asia than the us so what that's that's clearly what we are going to do first internally then the next step is to go into our supply chains and actually that's where we look well to m40 and to the gender task force that's going to be there to see what support we can get there and how we can use maybe the audits, the social audits that we are doing globally already, but also what we can do on top of the uh, the auditing part. But what can we do beyond auditing? Where need the priorities going to be? Because it's impossible that we are going to do everything at the same time. But we want to do the actions that are uh, generating the most of the impact in our supply chains. And it's fair to say, I think, that the, the way up until now we look at supply chains is quite, well, having a limited scope. We look at factories. We don't look always at the raw material supply beyond the factory level. That's not because we don't want, but simply because we need to put our priorities in a certain place. But that should not withhold us to advance on it, to do what we can do. And again, we are looking towards Amphori and probably also others to provide us with tools, provide us with knowledge and to well support us and maybe trigger us a little bit at uh, times uh, to on, on this way to improve. So it's it's not something that we say, well, it's 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 bad and we need to get rid of it. No, it's something that will be good for our business good for our suppliers on the longer term. So simply it's the right thing to do. And at the end, it's a business case. It's good for the business. Thanks. Thank you so much, Leon. It was really, really insightful. I think it also gets to show that we, uh, you know, we, we, we need this kind of collaboration that we have. I think Katya will shed a little bit more, more light on that, what that means practically, but uh, indeed, how do we get from uh, signing such commitments to actually implementing them. I think that's the big challenge uh, and that this is what, what this partnership is. is a, I'm really looking forward to hearing from Katja. Thanks Katja. Perfect. Um, thank you uh, Francis, but most of all thank you um, Leon and I actually I have to say um, I'm really pleased that you shared really honestly um, your perspective because I think that is what is uh, needed and I just want to give uh, two reflections um, on basically what you said. I really like the point about internally 
setting a signal or giving a signal. And from my experience before, I think it's important to have a vision out there and then people will follow. And I think there's a lot to do to um, get this done, but I really liked uh, your internal kind of signal element and also paired this with saying, you need to start with our own operation. And then we look at our suppliers. There are many that start the other way around. And I think it's a very strong um, statement and I really, really like that. And you're totally right. There is a big gap um, between saying and doing. And so I think um, this is also one that we really want to close together because very often that gap is there, but it's not intentionally. So I think exactly what you also said there is, um, it's not that people don't want this. Um, it is a cultural shift and it's a big, big um, social norm shift that has been embraced in all of us. There's a lot of bias in everyone, um, which you cannot change um, over time. And I, I liked when you were saying, but and then for people fall back in their old um, habits and they just want to have the best person in the job. And it does not mean if, driving women's economic empowerment, you can have the best person in that job. So I think it's really sort of overcoming these cultural um, pressures um, is something what takes time and takes also support. And I think that's why we start together with Amphori. We cannot just get people sign the, the women's empowerment principles and then find your journey. I think what we're trying to do is really give and provide some uh, some guidance and more sort of exchange and opportunity to really go this journey together. So as you said very easily, and what needs to be done, everyone in this room can sign the women's empowerment principles without having everything um, in place or anything in place. I think everyone can sign it as long as there's leadership and commitment that you want to go this journey and that you want to change something. And so I think this is a call for action. Really join it, sign it, become part of this community. It does not cost anything um, to give this commitment. And as we've heard from um, Annelise, I think firm commitments in the industry right now to really committing to this agenda are really needed um, also to give a signal and have the signal working not only in your own organization, but as an, as an industry. Um, in order to close this do and say gap, um, we want to partner on something which we call the Women's Empowerment Principles Activator. And the name says us all, is how to activate and how to implement the Women's Empowerment Principles and what we can provide to support you on the journey. If you want to move on to the next slide. Um, so the Women's um, Empowerment Principles Activator is a tool um, which allows companies to really work together as a cohort with multiple companies to assess their current situation, where do you stand, help to set targets, and to build a very clear action plan and get, get support to really implement this action plan. So this looks like a very complex um, sheet and we don't need to go in all of this detail because it's not really complex. Basically what we have kind of looked at to really make a visible impact and really see something, it takes time. So that is not happening overnight. So we have said, what is kind of a realistic um, time frame where we can put companies on the right track and not saying it was in this time frame, tick in the box, everything is done. It's a starting point. So we have kind of looked at this in three phases. Um, so phase one is we are right now here at the Amphoe conference and we are looking into a sharing um, what are the women empowerment principles, hearing from people like Leon to really understand um, why is this so important? How can I do this as a company? And this will continue over the next couple of um, weeks where we would like to have dialogues um, with you and conversations with you and providing even more information um, about us to get you very comfortable to really speak and in your own organizations and see, is this something we can commit to and really stand up for um, gender equality in our own operations. Um, once this is done, we've set us a target to really bring a cohort of companies, as I said before, between 10 um, and 15 companies to go together through a journey from assessment. We have tools that are um, available, um, assessment tools, free, easy um, action planning tools. And we have a series of um, different thematic um, webinars and uh, trainings that we will contact as part of this um, web activator. So in phase two, 
you are part of this group of like-minded companies and you will learn together. And the first thing you will be doing is doing this assessment. But obviously we also realize this is something very personal and individual for a company. So that's why we've also said there will be elements within this activator um, that really will include one-to-one -one, um, mentorings, hand-holding, capacity building and support and technical assistance to do some of these um, assessments and action plannings. Once you have identified what are the areas you really want to work on and want to prioritize, because you will probably discover multiple things that um, can be improved and multiple things that are good already, and everyone will have its own priorities. But what we then do is in phase three, when it's about activating, bringing the right people also together to follow the right trainings and really drive the um, progress on the areas that you have identified as your priority as a company. So this is very easily kind of described the, the journey. Um, and the journey should be, um, if you want to move forward to the next slide, around um, something like um, from October to June. So a good, 10 months, um, which we would um, see as a realistic um, period. Um, as I said already, 10 to 15 companies. And again, I think probably um, some of the topics are quite sensitive. And that's why we said also within um, this program, you will have def different ways of um, working um, with the companies on a very broad or kind of like the day webinar, contacting, showing content, um, getting you um, informed about things, but then also forming smaller roundtables with companies that are comfortable to exchange on specific topics. And then we will have our one-to-one -one, uh, mentoring and coaching sessions and also some uh, peer exchange with experts that we will bring in as UN Women, as BSR, to really make sure um, that you benefit um, out of that and get some um, impulses also from others. So what does it actually um, mean from a thematic perspective on the next slide, please? Um, I'm not going to go and share all of the details, but the key message I just want to show is that there's a very of um, and a richness of trainings that we are developing um, BSR, Amphori, and UN Women um, together for the moment. And some of them are already um, existing and we're just customizing some also to the needs of different industries that um, you are present in. So really from gender bias to sexual harassment, women in leadership, equitable workplaces, so a really um, wide range. And you don't need to go through all of them. But as I said, the ones that are really priority and the ones that are adding the biggest value to you as an organization right now. So this could be um, to really choose something where you say we have actually an issue and we just want to solve that issue. Um, so that is fine as well. And some might say, Okay, we see a, a huge opportunity if we get more um, women um, in our factory floors. Okay, then let's work on this one. So it is really a customized and a, a dialogue way where you can identify what do you want to work on. And very simply, and at the end, obviously you as a company, please on the same on the next slide. Um, I have a very positive. Um, mindset and have a positive belief in uh, human beings and companies as well. And I think probably most of you in this room right now are following this webinar because they are engaged in the topic and they want to learn about it and they see it as a something what is important. However, I think we also need to make sure that um, we understand what is in for you as a company and some probably representing leadership, some might be um, out of um, HR department, some from others. I think what is important is really to land and make sure this is a moral and a business um, opportunity for companies. I mean, what's in for you um, by joining such a network um, of at this time, when we um, wrote a slide last week, we had 2,900 CEOs being part of the, the network globally and with their respective companies. This number is above 3,000 um, and has been grown over the last 10 years. So it's a community that grew and is um, working already. Um, so I think it's very valuable for you to have these networks to others and there's regular exchange uh, with these networks. You will be able to have a very concrete plan um, and implementation guidance for what you can do as a company. But also I think it is a, a forum 
to be honest, UN Women and Women's Empowerment Principles, there is a lot of trust and visibility to show your leadership as a company, but also be seen as a company that has visibility. And we discussed before how important this is not only for employees, but also for the consumers and the stakeholders you are working with. And last but not least, I think the knowledge we talked about, but it will bring you to a, a stronger business um, in the end, which is more resilient. And I think that's where we all see it is important to build resilient um, businesses where women equally participate. So last thing, um, we want to start this cohort, this first cohort um, from October onwards. And I'm also very honest, and I think Kuji or Francis will say this as well. It's a journey for all of us as well. We haven't done this cohort before, and it's something which is new. And we are looking for companies that are willing to go on this journey with us. Um, so we also say this first cohort is going to be a free cohort that um, collaboratively together, UN Women and Amphoe will financially support to make sure we can work together and learn together. Um, what does it require from a company? Obviously, the commitment, as we said, the leadership commitment. We really need that commitment to make something um, work. Um, the second um, is we need a champion in a company. The CEO is obviously not going to do all the work. We all know this, that this um, stays with uh, most of us, which is great. But we need a champion also that drives this forward. It's not going to happen um, alone. And um, what we also um, need in order to do and define action, you need to do a gender assessment. So it, it is a commitment to do this gender assessment tool, but it's something what you do for yourself, which you don't need to even share with um, the wider group or anyone. This is something um, what we ask companies to do to really reflect and see where their, their gaps are. And from a um, time commitment perspective, that's the one thing um, we ask. We said it's over 10 months and we estimate this would be a one to day, two days per month that you probably invest in this. And that does not need to be one person, but this can be um, getting input from HR, from different departments. So it's something across the organization, what we um, assume here. Sorry for making this a little bit um, longer, um, but it's probably my passion and excitement about this really interesting and I think great initiative, um, which we would love to um, implement with you. Thank you very much. And I think um, Gucci or Francis um, are still going to say some work or open it up for Q&A. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Katya, really uh, for presenting this WEBS Activator. And, and indeed, also from our side, we're really excited to, to take this forward together with you and together with, uh, with BSR to really help companies to uh, integrate uh, gender equality women's empowerment into their business operations and also into their supply chains uh, business operations. Um, maybe just to move to Q&A, we have um, around 10 minutes, I would say. Um, we did not receive so many questions yet, so please feel free to, like also following Katya's presentation, if there are any specific uh, questions you have in, in terms of the practicalities of that WEBS activator, etc then please feel free to raise them now. But also, of course, uh, we're happy to receive further questions uh, after uh, this webinar. So let me start with, uh, with um, actually only question that we've received so far. Um, so that is the, it's anonymous, so I can't read uh, who it is, but it's based on this progress that Amphoria has made with regards to women empowerment. How does the organization view the firing of pregnant employees. So I leave that. Uh, Guji, if you want to respond to that. Thank you, Francis. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Francis, and, and, and passing this, this difficult question. Um, one of the things I would like to pick up on, which um, Leon mentioned and Katja mentioned, is that there's a lot of, there's, there's often a gap, you know, between what we try to do and what actually happens. Now, one, I, I would like to point out that we are on a journey and one of the first things we did or perhaps the, the second building block of our gender strategy has been to look at our own organization and see what we can do as our own organization to become more gender responsive. Um, and this is, first of all, to admit that um, we are far from perfect. We are on a journey. We do not claim to be in any way the, the gold standard for gender responsiveness. Um, and we have um, implemented and, and uh, brought in trainers 
to look um, to train our staff, our, our senior management, and, and every aspect, um, every every kind of employee was supposed to undergo this. This is still ongoing, um, and as I hope that we will be able to improve, we're striving to be what we would call an equal opportunity employer. Um, this is a journey that never ends. Now. In the, in, in the light of the crisis, we had to take certain decisions, which I think were tough for everyone. Um, so both male and female employees, um, unfortunately, um, we had to let a few people go. Um, that is the senior management, that is. But I hope that as things develop, as we continue in this journey, we will be able to um, get better at the decisions we make um, and, and make decisions that will not bring us into question on this. In case anyone okay. has any Thank you so much, Guji. There is another question here. Um, that, uh, when, when the activator, the project scope is only on supply chains or is it the full company, including head offices and stores? Uh, Katya, I can respond to that question and maybe you can complement um uh, what what else uh, uh there is to say um indeed i mean you know so far the women empowerment um, program uh, that we launched in 2018 and is still ongoing really focuses on uh on the supply chain so on the producers um uh in our members uh, supply chain and this webs activator is actually uh, supposed to be more holistic so it's really about looking at the members so really seeing okay how can you go from signing the commitments with your ceo what do you need to do internally to get that buy-in but then also how how do you train uh, your purchasing department your different departments etc all the departments that are relevant uh, to actually uh, integrate gender equality into your own business operations and into the business operations of your business partners so it really looks at both it's not um, limited to the supply chain it's really more more holistic than that. Katja, if you want to add anything. Yeah, I just want to maybe add one um, little point to this. Um, I think this came also from a conversation that we had um, in Vietnam, um, I think last year at one of the roundtables where one of the employee members came to us and said, we're doing a lot in our factories, but in our own headquarters, um, there's more to be done. So I think that was sort of the intent also to bridge a little bit um, that gap to actually have both supply chain and uh, the wider um, company just kind of sharing where it came from actually um, when we decided to do this in that way. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, there's no other questions for the moment. Um, please also, if anybody would like to unmute themselves or would like to, to speak up directly, um, that's of course also possible. Um, but since we don't see any further questions at this point, um, I would propose to, to pass on to, to Guji to talk about uh, the way forward. Um, and yeah, please, Guji, close yours. I think you're on mute. Sorry, we cannot hear you. Thank you very much. Um, can I move to the next slide, please? And the next one after that. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone. Um, the contributions from our speakers have been great. Katya, Annalise, Leon, um, Francis. Um, thanks very much for this really um, enriching presentation. Um, I also want to thank the participants and the questions we received. We remain open to receive further questions. Um, I think um, as I present, you will see our email addresses where you can contact us and, and, and we can keep the conversation going. Um, I think the, 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 the Katya's last slides presented quite a, 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 an elaborate but simple process of, of, of signing the webs and going on this journey. Um, I would like to elaborate on the fact that we feel that it's, it's a doable thing um, that we would like to support others to do. So what we see as the, as the next steps are from an amphorae point of view is that just next month, um, we will be sending out, we have already reached out to some members, but we will be sending out an invitation to all members 
to sign the, the, the webs and to join the gender task force that Leon referred to. The gender task force will act as a vehicle um, for the webs activator. It will be what we will use to assemble our members and attract others um, who want to join us in this journey to be able to um, go along with UN Women and activate the webs um, from beginning to end. It will also provide us with opportunities to uh, have discussions on how to better integrate gen uh, gender in our own due diligence tools, um, how to strengthen um, gender within our own organization, and, and to tackle some of the very difficult questions that we are receiving uh, to ensure that we we are in, we can indeed reach the, 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 the gender gold standard. Um, following that invitation in, in, in July, we will um, be working internally as well, strengthening, um, as I said, within our own organization, identifying champions within our governance bodies. So um, within the board um, that Leon sits in, um, within our advisory council that Katya sits in, um, our, our, our membership advisory council as well, to identify champions to ensure that at every single level we have um, champions who can support us in this journey going forward. On the women empowerment principles. That same month in September, we launched the task force and the webs activator. So um, September is a big month. Um, we hope that um, from July we would have received a, a number of, uh, indeed we have already got a good indication of a number of members who would want to come take come along with us on this journey, but we hope to have even received more um, as Katja said, we want to take a, 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 um, a, between 10 to 15 members uh, um, on this journey, um, at least to start with. And we're also open and welcome to non-members to come and join us with this because our goal goes beyond Emphory, but really to support businesses in, in, in embracing um, the woman empowerment principles. In doing this, the, we will be having a series of webinars um, that will be the main sort of tool to take you on this journey. And the first webinar we foresee for um, October 2020, there should be others that follow after that. Um, I have to say that these days when you, you, you map out a calendar, you always say COVID permitting. So um, we can say COVID permitting. Of course, these are webinars which may not require physical presence, but we know that um, even when physical presence is not um, required, COVID has had an impact in different ways. So COVID permitting, this would be our calendar um, moving forward. As, as mentioned, um, we provided our contact details in case you have further questions and we want to continue the discussion. So Katya is the expert on, on, on the women empowerment principles. Um, I can now say that she's an, uh, not only the UN woman expert, but because she's joined our advisory council, she is one of our experts as well. So she can answer questions um, for us and for UN women on women empowerment principles. Um, in terms of the sort of more um, in-house or internal questions, um, you can contact myself or Francis. Um, our emails are provided there. So um, in, we can help you and, and help you what, um, take what we think is, is the right decision and moving ahead with the women empowerment principles. Um, thanks once again. I think we are coming close to the end of the session. Um, if there are any, um, comments or questions, I'd be happy to look at them now, but if not... Very good, from, from my side, there's, there's a couple of other questions that, that came in. I'm, I'm okay. aware of time, but it's, um, it's tricky. Okay, we have very little time. I don't know Naomi, if you can advise whether we can go over time, but we can try and take them very quickly. If we yes. could just, um, some of the questions actually that we uh, could already respond to us uh, with regard to the sharing of the slides and the, and the recording. That indeed is possible to do that. Yes, um, we will re reiterate that message. But then, uh, when it comes to um, the tracking of uh, the members' progress uh, in this regard, so that's a question directly addressed to Katya. I think Katya, you mentioned the member uh, and evaluation uh, planning uh, tool. 
Um, but if we just briefly elaborate on that. And uh, basically the question is, um, how do you keep track of the impact of the webs? Um, if there are no formal requirements to implement or report on them, um, and if there's a, a tendency on um, towards quantity rather than quality in providing business an opportunity to promote their brand image without no real commitment. So that's a, a very, very uh, critical question, very good question. I think it's very important to also see how can we hold uh, companies uh, accountable um, while at the same time keeping the requirements um, uh, not too restrictive to uh, also keep them and help them uh, engage in this. So Katya, maybe if you want to say one word on this, sure. then we can, uh, we can uh, move on. Definitely, and, and I think that is the reason um, why we are doing this is really to really move away from um, commitment um, on a piece of paper to really getting into this implementation um, stage. And that's why we have um, started to design this web activator in terms of reporting. So um, we will we, we have um, an M and E framework in place for the the webs. Um, and what we're doing for the moment is moving actually or transitioning from sort of an internal reporting into um, an external um, reporting at a certain moment. So that's not going to happen overnight and also not going to happen over the next six months. But what BSR and um, you and women are working on uh, for the moment is really putting this um, framework which allows you to internally track and um, we want companies also we have a platform which is called webs.org where all signatories are on and for the moment there are three four indicators that companies um, already publicly report on that and this is something where we want to expand um, for the future where also companies become more rewarded um, for better impacts that they are achieving so she said also we are on a journey um, and I think that's the first step to really um, get internal reporting and tracking and then moving into the deeper external reporting and tracking as well and I can just maybe add one more thing um, the future is going to be that there will be also more mandatory reportings required from governments I think that's a trend you have seen in sustainability already and I think that is not going to stop when it comes to gender as well so I think you are ahead of the game in a way I think so this if you want or not this is going to come um, sooner or later and I think what we're trying to do is be proactive and really um, equip the companies with um, having a good starting point before something really becomes mandatory. Indeed thank you so much Katya I think on that note we can we can close uh, the webinar thank you so much everyone for your attention it was really uh, insightful also thank you to the speakers again uh, for your for your great contributions and um, as Guji mentioned we will be reaching out uh, soon uh, in the coming coming two to three weeks uh, with more information on how you can actually engage in this 10-month uh, project uh, on the webs activator uh, together with us uh, UN women and and BSR and we are very much looking forward to to uh, working with you on this it's a first come first serve uh, basis we intend to have 10 to 15 companies so uh, we look forward to hearing from you on this and uh, please um, yeah stay with us and uh, support uh, from your side in this regard is much appreciated thank you so much everyone and uh, have a good day thank you thank you thank you all thank you all have a good day